No, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. And you're partially right. However, I am not here. I am not here to flame the Mortal Kombat community. I promise you. Hear me out. Now, I actually want to start on a positive note because I just finished watching the combat cast. And I was sitting there thinking about it before I decided to jump on Twitter to see what people were saying. I wanted to form my own opinion. Now, I'll start with the positive. Noob Cyber looks awesome to me. His general design looks really good. It looks like some actual thought went behind the character with that weird hand that he's got on his belt. Uh, the fact that you can only use it once per game and it disables the shadow. The fact that the shadow has an actual like built-in mechanic with like risk and reward. Noob Cyber looks great. I also want to point out, and maybe this is where the W's end, uh, because I'm not going to talk too much about character balancing. That's, that's neither here nor there to me. But I do want to point out how amazing it was to see that NRS finally decided to put some MK sounding music in the game. I was about to turn the stream off. I didn't really want to watch the uh, people playing the game at the end. But I was like, let me stick around because it's Noob Side, but he's my favorite character, so let me stick around. I stick around and the match, the match starts and this like like rock or metal, I, I can't remember what it was, but I just remember being like, I sat up in my bed, I was like, oh, oh, it sounds like Mortal Kombat again. And it changed the entire atmosphere of the game. Like I was watching and I was really immersed in the fight. And it really goes to show you how much of a difference a soundtrack can make. Now, if that's the direction they're going with the chaotic stages, the chaos stages, more power to them. I think Mortal Kombat needs to return to rock and heavy metal and maybe even some techno tunes like they had in the old Mortal Kombat films. So that aside, the Noob Cyber and the new stage, all well and good. They've added Towers of Time. I'm sure people are happy about it. Towers of Time is a mode that I never was interested in. But if people are happy, people are happy. But we got to talk about the elephant in the room. Now, I'm just going to put the tweets on the screen because initially I was going to read them out to you guys. But there are so many. I'm not actually sure I can get through all of them before I finish ranting as in putting them on the screen for you guys just to see. There's so many people angry online about the Warrior Shrine. Now, the Warrior Shrine itself, to me, is not a bad thing. The problem with the Warrior Shrine is that it has been blacked out since the game came out. We've had no idea what it was. And obviously when something like that happens in a video game, when you sell a video game at full price to people and there's a mode in that game that is blacked out, it gets the gears turning. People start to think, what could that be? It must be so big they didn't have enough time to finish it. It must be something monumental. You can understand the rationale and the thought process that goes behind that. Why is this mode blacked out what the hell is the warrior shrine now, i didn't know what the warrior shrine was going to be i've spoken to multiple people nobody knew what it was apart from one guy who predicted it nine months ago but outside of that the people that i spoke to no one knew and so to be sitting there and going through all of the ups and downs more downs of mk1 let's be honest but going through all of the ups and downs of mk to sit there and wait for this mode to drop and all it is is immortalizing the top five fighters online so the top five players in a warrior shrine where you can go and view their names and see who the strongest warriors were for that season. That itself is not a bad concept. It's, re it's really not. The problem is, is that there was so much anticipation built up for this that as you guys can see on the screen, people are not happy with. And it really boggles my mind because it's not like these guys don't know how to use social media. We say all the time on this channel, is anybody reading the room? Like I was critiquing Tekken the other day for the Tekken store and it's shambolic practices. But I might need to create a new word. I don't know if shambolic is good enough here. NRS, what were you thinking? Honestly speaking, what were you thinking? I don't want to dunk on the community. I don't want to dunk on the community because it's not their fault. They are Mortal Kombat fans, as am I. Just MK11 hurt my feelings and <laughs> MK1 really drove the knife in my back. I'm checked out. I, I hold hope for the game in the future. Maybe MK2 or whatever they decide to call it will be better. But for now, I'm just here kind of watching the Inferno. Now, as I said, there were good points to this combat cost. You know, we got Noob Cyborg. It looks great. That new stage looks awesome. Derek came with the birthday shouts. you got to have the birthday shouts. It wouldn't be a combat cost without one. But this Warrior Shrine business is an absolute joke. And people are pissed online. They are pissed to be waiting that long. I even spoke to somebody. I'm not going to say who it was. Very big content creator, spoke to a couple of big con content creators in private actually, and one of them went as far as to say that this is embarrassing as a Mortal Kombat content creator. This is embarrassing. Getting secondhand shame from a game you didn't even work on, that, is, that, that, that speaks levels. I don't know 
what is going on over at NRS. I really don't because sometimes you can see some, you can see a glimmer of what used to be, but then you get situations like this where it's like, what were you guys thinking? Like, honestly, honestly, a leaderboard, a leaderboard, guys, a fucking leaderboard. And you have to imagine this hurts even more to a lot of people because as I said, MK1 has gone through a lot of downs a lot of downs, right? So for there to be a mode blacked out for people to be waiting on, this is gonna be like the Renaissance era of MK1, right? Unfortunately not. Now the character buffs, I heard some people like what they're seeing. I heard some people didn't get the buffs that they wanted. If you're not a noob cyborg player and maybe your character didn't get any buffs, anything of significance. Outside of the story mode and online practice is there, you know, give props where props are due even though it is a year late you know it's there now so they can do online practice but this is just this is shambolic this is really shambolic I don't, I don't even know if that's the right word to use anymore i might need to just make up a whole new word for this anyone that's enjoying mortal kombat 1 i don't want you to see this video and be like mike can you just get off our necks stop talking about mk1 leave it alone go play tech and go touch grass I don't want you to feel like I'm attacking you. I'm not. I feel bad for you. And I don't mean that in a sarcastic way. I'm not taking shots. To spend money on a game, invest time in the game, produce content for a game, only to have the developers just be blissfully unaware of what is going on around them. I can imagine that is probably irritating, especially to see a lot of the hype surrounding other games right now. You know, like I just put up a video super excited for sparking zero you know that's a major fighting game that's coming into the scene it's not a traditional fighting game but it's an arena fighter and it's been done with a lot of love and care even if you don't like arena fighters you gotta look at that and be like wow they really love dragon ball like they 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 care for that game you can see it with what they've produced you go over to tekken you see the hype around heihachi yeah tekken's got its problems don't get me wrong i made a video two days ago or yesterday about the store you look at street fighter terry bogard is there people are excited you know, and then you've got 2XKO. The Guilty Gear community seem pretty happy with their game. So I get it. I completely get the frustrations of the MK community. This is a this is a fat L, if I'm being completely honest with you. And again, the Warrior Shrine is not a bad thing in and of itself. If it launched of the game, I'd say, hey, that's pretty cool, man. I'm immortalized on the ranks. Like if I got into the top five, no one can take that away from me. That I don't have to take a screenshot. It has immortalized me in the game. That's pretty cool when you're investing your time into it. The problem with that is that a lot of people that play Mortal Kombat are casuals. It's not like Tekken and Street Fighter, you know, they call those the sweaty fighting games, right? The sweats play Tekken and Street Fighter. With MK, a lot of like people that don't care about getting good at the game play MK, you know? That's why MK's always introduced these casual modes because they have a lot of casual players. And so you make a mode that to me would make more sense to have in Tekken or Street Fighter. Again, it's not a bad mode. I like the Warrior Shrine. I think the Warrior Shrine is pretty cool. It's just you blacked it out for a whole year. You blacked out a whole, a whole mode for a whole year and it's a leaderboard. It's a leaderboard. You need to understand that. Like you, you, you need to look around you and be like, are we really about to drop this? Now I have heard some people speculating that this was meant to be something else and something happened. I am not trying to hear that. Even if I was to entertain that, it doesn't matter because the reality of the situation is this is what the Warrior Shrine is. So to a lot of people, the reason that they're upset is that it makes no difference to them because these people are not mighty unjust. They're not Sonic Fox and they're not any of these top players that are gonna get to top five, they're casuals. And so this Warrior Shrine has been blacked out for a long time, you must be able to understand, would suck the fun out of the game for them because when you anticipate something for so long and then it, it comes out it's like what the hell is this this isn't for me it should have been something that everybody can enjoy instead what's going to happen is the people that dominate the leaderboards are the ones that are going to enjoy it they're going to have their names immortalized and that's fine like i said the warrior shrine is a good mode i like it it should have launched with the game there shouldn't have been all this anticipation and i completely understand the anger i don't even know if the screenshots are still going i'm going to be editing this afterwards there were so many screen it got it got to the point where i was like i can't even read any more of this everybody was angry i couldn't i found a few people saying I, i'm gonna grind for this and i get that incentive but you you have to understand where these casuals are coming from man this is just one of the most disastrous things i've ever seen now the story mode might be good new cyber looks awesome the character buffs are really good and if they are going down the road of implementing rock and heavy metal back into MK and displaying it on the Chaos stages in, in the new Chaos Reigns expansion, good. Those are all good things. But this L was too fat not to cover and not speak about. And I can only imagine some other content creators are gonna be speaking about this. And I can only imagine that this is gonna be 
a conversation on Twitter and it's probably going to overwhelm Chaos Reigns because they kept on saying Warrior Shrine's coming, Warrior Shrine's coming. If the mode was blacked out but we knew what it was, yeah, we're going to have this leaderboard. It's just, it's not working right now because we haven't really got cosplay and we don't have the backing to get it working. I don't really know. But if there was some sort of buffer beforehand, this wouldn't have happened. But you guys absolutely played yourself and now you just got to suffer through it. This is not about hating MK. I don't want to see MK doing poorly. I really don't. I like playing games. I don't want MK to suck. <laughs> I really don't, but it just does. It just does. It has gotten better, but it, it does suck. If you're looking at all the big fighting games, MK is, is, it is lacking. Now, the animalities, fantastic. Really liked what I saw. Takeda's octopus, Kraken animality, whatever the hell that was, awesome. Noob Cybot's crocodile animality, where it's a callback to MK9, awesome. Generally speaking, the presentation and the fatalities and the way they kill characters in the game ain't got a problem with it, ain't got a bad thing to say about it. They they keep pushing the envelope and I'm like, good, keep doing that. More Kombat needs to keep on raising the bar. You can't you can't go down, you gotta keep going up, right? And they're doing that with the fatalities. They all look fantastic. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. But we do need to acknowledge that this was this was definitely a read the room situation. And this should be a lesson to other developers that are watching that, I'm sure. Other developers are watching that. The guys over at Street Fighter, maybe the Tekken team are going, oh boy, we better never do that. Let's never have a mode blacked out and not tell people what it is if it's not going to be the most hype thing ever. Outside of that, that's the expansion. Now, I am apparently going to get, get to play the story mode. I ain't buying this shit. Let me just make that clear. But I'm going to try and play the story mode. And if I can't, then we're just going to watch it on YouTube. I'm interested to see where they take the story. Outside of that, run of the mill business over here. We'll look at what's happening with MK. We'll see if Combat Pack 3 is ever going to become a thing. I heard that there were leaks for it, but I don't cover leaks on this channel, so we're, we're going to ignore those. They've been told to me in video format, which you know I couldn't do anything about, but I'm not going to cover them. We'll see where MK1 goes from here, and it will give me an indication of where MK2 might start out. So let me know what you guys think of the Chaos Reigns uh, expansion. Let me know if you think it's worth the price point. Uh, I, as I said to the content creators that reached out to me, I ain't going to say who it was, but nobody seemed happy. Nobody seemed happy. Not one of them. And there was at least four of them. So you guys let me know what you think.